Astrophotography images have a problem. Noise. Noise can ruin what could have otherwise been a great image. But luckily there's a way around that. Dithering. In this video, I will show you how to set up dithering using the ASI Air Plus. But if you don't have an ASI Air Plus and are still looking around for how you want to control your stuff, I'll explain why dithering is important. So what is dithering? Dithering is a method of moving your imaging setup in between frames ever so slightly so the stars in your intended object end up somewhere else in the picture. Now, these movements are pixels at a time. These are very small movements. So you might be asking yourself, why dither? Well, every camera has some inherent noise in it, whether it is dark current noise, which is the noise produced by the electricity in the sensor, and some pattern noise. And the pattern noise can be a little bit random. What it does is it helps processing software figure out where the inherent noise is and average it out. Now, one thing to note is that even without dithering, stacking software can get rid of noise. It's not gonna get rid of all of it. Let me show you what I mean by that. So when I first got the ASI Air and the HEQ5 Pro, they didn't play nice with each other. For some reason, using the hand controller with the HEQ5 Pro, the ASI Air just doesn't like it and it kept disconnecting on me. So, since I was at a dark sky location that night, I ended up just using the hand controller, pointing it at the North American Nebula and just saying go. What that meant was that I wasn't able to auto guide and hence I wasn't able to dither. So we're gonna dive into PixInsight and we're gonna look at the raw frames from that image and we're gonna see what happens when you don't dither and auto guide. Okay, now that we're in PixInsight, I have Blink set up, which kind of animates all of the frames that you want to use for your intended image. So if I go ahead and hit play on the Blink, watch what happens with the North American Nebula. You can see how it's kind of drifting off to the upper right in the frame. And you just see that ever slight drift. So if I stop this, and let's go ahead and close that out. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the final image of the North American Nebula. I wanna show you something. So I'm opening up the stacked image before I processed it, and then I'll open up the final image to show you how it still sticks around. So this is the stacked image of it, and if I just auto stretch it, and then zoom in, if you look real close, Where's the area? Right here. If you look real close, there's some banding here. And what that's called is walking noise. And this is common if you're using a star tracker. You can kind of see it here too. So I'll close this out and then let me open up the final image. So this is the final image after I got done processing it. And when I process this, I use Photoshop instead of PixInsight. But if we zoom in, in that same area, if you can see right in here, there is still some streaking that happened. And if I zoom out a little bit, it's very apparent. So because of those problems that I had with that walking noise, I ended up getting an EQ mod cable, which is why in other videos, I recommend it so much. It helped the ASI Air play very nice with the HEQ5 Pro. And ever since I got home from that trip, I've used the EQ mod cable and I've never had a problem. But now when I go out and image, I set it up so I dither every three frames, about two pixels each. And that's roughly what we'll go over here in a minute. But let me show you what it looks like when it's actually dithering. All right, so now we're back in PixInsight and I am using the frames from the Soul Nebula picture that is part of the PixInsight processing guide that I released a couple weeks ago. So if I go ahead and hit play, you'll notice that the Soul Nebula actually stays kind of centered and it's very random on which direction it moves. This helped keep things nice and sharp too, which is awesome. The nice thing about that is it helps smooth out the noise that was in that, and none of those streaks like what happened with the North American Nebula happened with this specific picture. So because of the dither, let's look at the stacked image of the Soul Nebula. This is the Soul Nebula picture, and I did do a quick color calibration of it because there's so much green in it, but if I go ahead and auto stretch, there is a pretty much unprocessed version of the image. But if we zoom in, we can see all that noise, but there's none of that walking noise like what was there with the North American Nebula. So dithering definitely took care of all of that. And from here, all of this noise would have to just be processed out. This is the noise that 
dithering won't take care of, but it is a lot smoother than it would have been without it, like what you saw with the walking noise. Now that I've explained that a little bit, you're probably wondering, well, how do I dither? Before I get into using the ASI Air, do keep in mind that if you don't have any way to control it at all, you can dither manually. Say you're using a ball head, loosen it just a little bit and make a very small adjustment. Remember, I said very small adjustments. As long as you keep your intended object in frame and you don't change the orientation, so you can't turn the camera 90 degrees and keep shooting, it'll work kind of like using an automatic dither. But you can do it manually. It's just very time consuming because you have to stop between every few frames, adjust, and then tell it to keep going. Before we continue, I do have a question for you. Have you ever had to manually dither? If you have, let me know down in the comments below how it went. Other than that, most control software does have the ability to dither, but you do need an auto guiding camera. So let's dive into the ASI Air app and I'll show you how to set up dithering. Okay, so once you are in the ASI Air app and everything's turned on, plugged in, you're good to go. All you have to do is tap on the guide camera settings at the top and then just scroll down to the bottom where it says dither settings. Now in here, I personally set it to change by two pixels and then the interval is every three frames. That way it's not dithering after every single frame. So the other thing that you want to do after you set up your dithering settings is go back and then go to guide stability settings. Now I usually set it to about two degrees and set it to about 10 seconds and I have the timeout to about a minute. So this helps explain why I set my frame settings to every third frame. Say you're doing 30 frames. If it were to do a dither between every single frame, it could take up to an extra half hour just to settle. If the guiding's bad or if there's a little bit of wind keeping things from settling down, whatever the case is. But if you do every third frame, then maybe you're adding up to an extra 10 minutes. So you kind of want to judge it based on how much extra time you're willing to wait for dithering to settle down. Now, if your guiding is good and your polar alignment's good, then it might actually just be very quick to get back to stability and keep shooting. In which case, you're not wasting very much time at all. So that's exactly why I set it to every third frame. But like I said, your polar alignment and your guiding accuracy will affect the dithering settings. This is true for all guiding software, not just the ASI Air. But hey, that's it. That is how you dither and why it's important. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I wanna thank you for watching. Clear skies.